Hi, my name is Rod Cleef, and I'm the host of the Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing Podcast. And every week I interview multifamily rock stars, and we talk about how they built incredible wealth for themselves and their families through multifamily properties. So hit the like and subscribe buttons to get notified every Monday when a new episode comes out. Let's get to it. Welcome to Multifamily Rockstars. Now, this is where we interview people that are crushing it in this business. And as a reminder, this is our new show, you know, where we show you guys the inside scoop of how multifamily investors are creating massive success in their businesses. And as always, we've got my co-host, Mark Nagy, who's the director of our Massive Action Team and our Warrior Mentorship Program. Mark, what's up, brother? Hey, Rod, not too much, not too much. How you doing? Good, man. So what's, what's exciting for you right now? What's, what's going on? Well, today's Friday the 16th. I'm sure the listeners will be listening after, but man, I'm super excited for the boot camp we got coming up this weekend. You know, I've, I've been to many of your boot camps and, and virtual boot camps before, but it always just gets me re-fired up to, to see hundreds and hundreds of people that are, that are like-minded just getting out there and spending a weekend just looking to change their lives. So I'm super excited for that this weekend. Yeah, it's been it's been it's been a lot of fun and a lot of work preparing, uh, you know, because we try to change it up and add new things every time. And so I'm, you know, after this is the really the only thing I had scheduled for today, and uh, and then I'm going to relax because it's going to be uh, two full days, 16, 17, 18 hours of training. So it's going to be a lot of fun. But listen, oh, yeah. we've got it. We've got an awesome, inspiring guy on the show today. He's in our Warrior Mentorship Program. His name is Jeff Guo, and Jeff was actually born and raised in Shanghai, China, and he came to the U.S. by himself, uh, you know, at the age of 18 and, you know, got a degree in real estate and finance, and he lives now in Maryland with his wife and his beautiful four-year-old daughter, and they're actually planning on moving to Orlando right up the road, so that's kind of cool, and they're moving so they can spoil that four-year-old daughter of theirs and go to Disney World, and and, uh, I'll tell you, uh, well, anyway, welcome to the show, brother. I'm really glad to have you here. Likewise, Rob. Thank you so much for having me here. Very excited. You, you bet. And and I know that you're also training for your second Ironman. So you've already done an Ironman. Is that right? Oh, that's right. Did it five, wow. six years ago, right before I proposed to my wife, just to give me some courage. But that is what you <laughs> <expect. laughs> I love it. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, that's that's fantastic. And you know, I had I remember we had season passes at Disney as well, and and brought my kids there. And and you know, because we lived in Sarasota, and it's only a two hour drive. And and it's just such a magical place. And I'm such a freaking sap. You know, we're sitting there. Tiffy and I are watching the parade, and they sing that music. They play that music, and I'm and I'm tearing up like a freaking four year old myself. You know, and and uh, you know, just uh, a lot of great memories there. In fact, it's time for us to go back again. But listen, welcome, my friend. And, uh, you know, so so why don't you start by telling us a little bit more about your story, expand on your story, and, you know, what got you going in this business? And, and um, you know, I mean, I, 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 your, your stats are fantastic. And I forgot to mention this when I, when I introduced you. Um, I mean, guys, he's got He's in, let's see, over like 576 doors as a GP and an LP. Um, half, over half of those are as a general partner. He's in a 130,000 square foot self-storage ground up development project. And he's in, you know, shopping centers and hotels and just taking the world by storm. So anyway, but, but talk about how you got started, my friend. Sure, absolutely. I think uh, like you said, Rob, I born and raised in Shanghai and uh, finished high school before I came to this country. And when I just remember when, in my high school, when, you know, all the other kids are doing the math and English problem, I brought this purple book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and all the kids are looking at me like alien. That's really how I get started, you know, came from entrepreneurship, you know, family. Um, most of them, you know, started their business in the 90s when China just started, you know, taking off and saw how, you know, my mother, a five foot two Chinese lady, turned a $4,000 saving into, you know, about 50 stores on the East Coast, about 70 employees. And just say that growing up, I know I'm be entrepreneur. It's kind of like my, you know, family bloodline. So I came to this country when I was 18 years old. And uh, I know I want to do real estate thanks to that purple book, reached out for that, got my degree in real estate finance. And after that, uh, got really, really uh, fortunate um, to um, to work for a real estate investment trust for asset management, also acquisition position in Washington, D.C., and went on to work for a uh, CMBS distressed asset. So a lot of super highly distressed commercial properties, 0% to 25% occupied. And our goal as the asset manager is to turn those assets around from, 
you know, 0% to hopefully 50, 60% and sell them within 24 months period. Um, and at the age of 25, super lucky to be able to work with, you know, 25 ish shopping centers all over the country from California to Florida to Milwaukee, uh, just rely on the teams about leverage. Um, super, super lucky, learn a lot. And how I got into multifamily, Rob, really thanks well, to Well, hold on, hold on. I want to stop you for one second before you go to multifamily. Sure. So you started in asset management. You worked with the firm in D.C. What, when was that, when those distressed assets were out there? I'm just curious on the timeline. Absolutely. It's between uh, 2011, 2012. So uh-huh. it's sort yeah. of towards the tail end of it. But still, there's a lot of distressed EMBS stuff coming to pipeline. Everybody. Sure, sure, sure. I was curious. I assumed it was because of the crash. And of course, there was still a lot of cleanup happening in 11 and 12. Okay, please continue. So multifamily, how'd you get into multifamily? Sure. So no, nothing about multifamily. Oh, it's a very expensive asset class compared to some others, you know, probably too expensive. And one day I was visiting my family in Shanghai. I remember, you know, 2018, early 2018, I was running on a treadmill to gym, looking over the city of Shanghai, started, you know, some podcast, this thing called Lifetime Cashflow. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> Um, and Ross started talking, interviewing people. And um, I just remember, Ross, I mean, just the, just the way you're talking to podcasts that your passion, I can tell you, you really love this business, right? And that's really got me pumped. You know, I listened to one episode and five episodes and 10 episodes. Four months later, I signed up to your LA bootcamp and met a few very nice folks. And, um, you know, talking about surrounding yourself with other like-minded people. Like, oh, you know what? If these folks can do that, probably I can do it and try it too. So that's really the beginning of my uh, multifamily career, thanks to your podcast and LA Bootcamp. So. Wow. Wow. So you actually were listening to my podcast in Shanghai with a view of the skyline. I'm just visualizing this view of the skyline out the window, suffering through my squeaky voice. And, uh, and then you came to LA <laughs> and came to my live event. And then I know you became a warrior, which is just freaking awesome. And, and, so, Mark, why don't you take take uh, and ask Jeff some questions? That, uh, I don't want to hog all the questions. <laughs> well, yeah, Jeff, I love your story because I have a similar story. I mean, really rich dad, poor dad, as well as some some main podcasts, including Rod's, you know, helped me kickstart my real estate career. But I always find it interesting how just a little resource like a, some audio or a book can change someone's lives. But you obviously come in all the way across the world by yourself. What, what tips or advice do you think you give to, to other immigrants or, or even just newbies in this business who, who are looking to get started in multifamily? Sure. I think that, you know, coming from a different country, it has its pros and cons, but I view that more as a pros in a sense that, you know, talking about cap rate, right? In the U.S., if you look buy something five or six cap rate, that's considered a normal for, for consider, you know, pretty expensive. But in Shanghai, where I came from, the property literally like buying at, one to 1.5 percent cap rate just because how expensive wow. things are so that really gives me perspective wow there are opportunities everywhere um you know i think that for those come from different culture you know definitely take advantage of the information the different culture came from because you know when i look at the real estate here from different lens i mean the amount of opportunity here in this country is just abundant just unbelievable and another thing I was going to say is that, you know, because I have a four-year-old daughter, like Rob mentioned, watch so many cartoons and Disney movies. I can't remember which one it is, but it says be, be kind and be courageous. I think this really has been so helpful to me. Be courageous so that I can, you know, be out of a comfort zone um, and be kind, just be kind to other people because always pay back. And I think Rod is a great example of that. Just be kind and it'll t- pay back 10, you know, 10 times, 100 times over. So be kind and be courageous. What, a, what an awesome tip. Let me, inter- let me ask a follow up on that, if you don't mind, Mark. So, so um, I know that, uh, you know, you would uh, have originally, um, de- well, how would you define your personality when we met uh, and, and your, yeah, I, I don't want to put the words in your mouth. How would you define it? I think I'm definitely on the more, I won't say shy, but more like on the introvert side, mm-hmm. you know, right. being a room of four or 500 people is definitely out, outside of my comfort zone. Um, did, you know, did, meet, was, did I make you stand up and meet people? You did. You I did, did didn't I? <laughs> it was my, one of my most horrifying moments. Hey, stand up and meet this. And I thought, oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding me. But yeah. the third book that I went to, I look forward to that because really yeah. that's, it's so valuable. It's absolutely yeah. so valuable. Yeah. That, by the way, guys, those of you listening, so so at my live events, now we're doing a version of that, uh, my live stream tomorrow as well, tomorrow night at our cocktail reception uh, for our VIP guests. But, but you know, I make everybody in the audience stand up and go meet five people and exchange information because this business is a freaking team sport. And and that's why you keep coming back to events, right, Jeff? 
Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love one of you're saying, Rob, your network is your net worth. At first, I thought some sort of, you know, slogan, this and that. But, you know, the longer you've been in this business, the more important it shows up to be. You know, net worth yeah. is net worth. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Now, tell the, tell tell my listeners about a conversation that we had inside the Warrior Group um, because we talked about it before we started recording, but I'd, I want it to be in your words. Sure, absolutely. So I remember that's one of the Warriors call probably sometime last year and you're asking, you know, a group of us, hey, what's your superpower? What can you add value to others? I goes, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I have that much superpower. And I think you just keep it pushing and pushing. It's okay, you know what? I'm good at math. I love numbers and I've done new, you know, lots and lots of underwriting, let's call it that. And probably someone else might be interested. So the day after, actually, you know what, the night of that um, coaching session, I posted a Facebook message to a group. I think probably one of my first, you know, Facebook posting, Hey, for any of you want to learn underwriting, please reach out to me. I'll show you how I did it for free and just send me a message. And more and more people reached out and I still, we're still friends with you know a lot of them. So thanks to your encouragement. Love it, love it, love it. And and guys, those of you in this business, what you're going to find is there's so many aspects to this business. So you know, uh, if if you've got underwriting skills, my God, that's a huge value add. If you're outgoing and you're more, you know, uh, you're 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 the person that loves to go out there and make relationships. That's a huge value add for investor relations and broker relationships. And uh, you know, and if and if you're operationally inclined and you're great at systems and, and setting up systems and procedures, you know, that's asset management. There's so many pieces that you can bring. Maybe you just have a good net worth and good liquidity. You can bring that to the to the table. So lots of ways to add value. Mark? Well, on top of that, the biggest takeaway that I that I took away from what you just said there, Jeff, because this is the way that we run our lives and our businesses. And, and Zig Ziglar said this. You've probably heard this. If you help enough people get what they want, you'll eventually get what you want, right? And that's what I took away from your post is that not just your superpower was underwriting, but you were offering value to other people, right? Which is amazing. Can I ask Jeff, how, how do you think that mantra of just giving and helping other people, how, how has that helped you grow your business and network? No, it's, it's huge, Mark. I think that it's kind of like, kind of like a, exercise in the muscle, the more you exercise, the stronger you get. You know, first when I do that posting after Rod's encouragement, it was quite out of my comfort zone, to be honest with you, you know, because I'm a pretty, pretty private person, never did any posts on social media, etc. So I'll say, number one, it pushed me out of my comfort zone, which is a great exercise. And second thing is I get to build those great relationships with people because I don't have anything, any expectation, whatever going to give back to me. And the friendship just means a lot. And number three, I think it helps me to have develop more and more of that abundance mindset in that the more I give, the more I, ha- I can give. And the world has just so many resources. So it really helps me overcome that, you know, scarcity mindset. Part of it is the culture where I came from because you've got 1.4 billion people, you know, trying to fight over the limited sources. So that really helps me overcome that scarcity mindset to me, which is huge. Nice. Nice. I love that. Everybody needs that, by the way. Everybody needs a push outside of their comfort zone. Uh, if there's anybody who can appreciate that, it's me. Rod Rod kicks my ass every day. So uh, I can understand whether he that. needs it or whether he needs it or not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Let's um let's let's transition to, to your personal life because I, I wanted to hear a little bit more about your trip. Obviously, you moved across the world, so moving to Florida is probably no big deal, but uh what, what had you guys make that decision to, to move to Florida for, for Disney? Why, why there? Sure, absolutely. I think that, you know, the thinking process, you know, first of all, we're super lucky in a position, you know, where both my wife and I were in our you know, early 30s. She works from home for a nonprofit for the past 10 years. She can work pretty much everywhere. And for the business that I'm developing right now, location is not an issue. So we're super, super blessed to be able to so-called location independent. And second of all, I remember in one of Rod's, um, life event, you know, he said, be present with your kids and remember their magic moments. Because I think, you know, as successful Rod is, I think that is one of the regrets I think he shared with it. He's being very vulnerable. And I go, you know what, my daughter is four years old. It'll be like, it'll be like time will go back so quickly before she turned 18, she turned 22. What's the best way that my wife and I can make the most out of it by spoiling her, you know, and what's a more magical place than Disney World. So that's when we decided to, you know what, let's just spend 12 months in in Orlando. And if we like it, great, let's spend 12 more months 
you know, if not, let's go somewhere else. But the bottom line is we want to be present as much as I want to be successful in the business. For me, the priority will be family first, because, you know, that means nothing to me if I have a great business, but no family. So that's really the thinking process is just learning from, you know, Rod's lesson, just be present and spend so much time with your family. That's where we came from. That's what we just want to spoil her to the best we can when she's still four years old. Let, let, let me ask a follow-up, Mark. I, so, so, or, or make a comment actually, um, you know, uh, one of the things that I teach is a weekly planning process and we'll be doing that uh, Sunday, this Sunday at, at the, at the boot camp. But, you know, I, and more, Jeff was referencing, um, uh, you know, most of the people in my program know that my biggest regret in life was coming home and being with my kids, playing with them, but not being mentally present. And and that's my biggest regret to this day. Um, you know, my daughter and my son will tell you I'm an awesome dad, but but I didn't live up to my expectations. So I'm, I can't tell you the gift you just gave me that I've inspired you to do that because you will so be so grateful for that time. And, and, um, and so, you know, as part of that planning process, one of the things that that I teach is is to, you know, if, if you're that person where you're so focused on success that when you're home, you're distracted, you're on your phone, you're looking at your email or whatever, to to actually block time for those that matter, so that that you know you don't have any of that regret, and then to, and then to capture those magic moments and actually write them down and remember them, at, uh, because uh, that's really what life is about. So thank you for reminding me, uh, reminding us of that, and and adding value to uh, my listeners with that. Mark, what, yeah, what let's say I went to what mm-hmm. you said, if I, can, if I just may, before I came to your first LA boot camp, you know, my thinking was probably with most of your attendees, oh, you know, I'm going to learn about all the strategies and in and outs, how to do NOI, how to do cap rate. While all that has been taught at your boot camp, but in my opinion, those are not the difficult things. And there are two more things I learned, which I think is way more valuable than the actual actual strategy of if, if I may share just you know please, please. it is important but that's actually the third most valuable thing I learned and the second one of them is the mindset because you're huge on mindset I'm sure we're gonna talk a little bit about it. Mindset comes before strategy and before mindset like I said before is that being present you know with a family the magic moment because one thing that we started doing is you know once in a while we create a Gmail account for our daughter that she does not have a login yet but once in a while we'll you know, send her a letter to that Gmail account and send some pictures of what happened that day. We're going to give that username and password to her when she turned 18 years old so oh. that um, she can look back all the 18 years worth of letters and stuff that mommy and daddy wrote to her oh. because of what you said. Remember the magic moment. To me, you know wow. what? We can buy a thousand doors, but none of that is going to be worth nearly as much as that magic moment that you just shared with the people. That's what I'm going to Wow, wow, wow. What an incredible gift. Oh my God, what an incredible idea. I hope you guys wrote that one down. That is freaking awesome. Taking little videos and movies and writing your thoughts down. You know, I did it in a journal, but yours, your rendition is so much better and interactive. Oh, I love it. What an incredible idea. Love it. It's like a digital time capsule, basically, yeah. is what you're doing for your daughter. <laughs> love <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Love I've never it. heard that as well. I'm, I'm going to write that one down. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you touched on a good point there, right? Of, of having, you know, every, every student that we come in contact with, we always try and help them get clear on their why, what's important in life, whether it's family, giving, whatever. Obviously, you've figured that out. A lot of people, though, they start to ask questions. Once they get clear on their why, they start to ask questions like, okay, how, how many units is it going to take to get there then? How long does it take to get there? How much effort am I going to have to, to, to put in to, to get there, right? To where I can have that freedom. Because most people don't understand what it takes to be able to move across the country with their daughter and take them to Disney every, every weekend, right? What, where in your journey, Jeff, were you able to start seeing results to where you could start to then refocus back on your family and the why and what's important? whether it was a certain amount of doors or time or what have you. Sure, absolutely. I think it's, you know, it's a ever evolving process. I think that a lot of people think it's either you're not there or you're there. You know, it's kind of like a switch, but in my opinion, it's an evolving process. Um, you know, part of for us, right, the financial independence is your what's your passive income, but also what's your expenses. So one thing that I would try to be very mindful of is, you know, living below our means, you know, be frugal, and uh, we've started, you know, we've always been pretty frugal and always a good saver. And we start accumulating, you know, things here and there. So passive income started rolling in, you know, over the years. I think, I think we're still on a journey to 
get to where we you know want to be very comfortably. But right now, you know, I think that if we live super you know frugal, I think um, we're at a very good position you know financially. And um, um, and I don't know if I answer your question, Mark. But I think it's kind of like evolving process, in my opinion. I, I, I'll interject. You know, when I had 500 doors in Denver, I lived in a one bedroom apartment. Could I have lived somewhere else? You bet. But I was in acquisition freaking mode. I was in build legacy mode. And so, you know, I, 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 I didn't. And, uh, you know, in fact, I remember I had a company doing big cold air balloons and I even had free rent there because I put up a balloon once a month at this apartment complex. True story. And, and so, you know, love it. Great, great example. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think the biggest takeaway there that, that, I took away at least is that it's not about the destination, right? It's about loving the journey along the way, right? Because the lesson is stop focusing on, okay, when I get a thousand doors, I'll be financially free. Focus on loving the process and what you're going to do along the way. Is is that right? Absolutely. I mean, the process itself has been so much fun, Mark. And, um, you know, I think Rod is a huge proponent on growth, the progressiveness. And when I first heard it, you know, I kind of understand the concept, but you know, I mean, there's been so many great books and mentors in the gym around Rod. I know you're a huge fan of and Tony mm-hmm. Robbins and uh, um, so many people. And that growth has been tremendous in terms of my own mindset and the people I get to meet. Um, and uh, I, I have a little, I believe myself, is there are two conversions. Number one is you convert your time, your W2 income, your time into money. The first conversion, convert from time to money. And the second conversion is convert from your money to passive income. And then the third conversion, in my opinion, is once you have the passive income, how can you convert that back to your time so that you can build a relationship? You can, you know, just love others. That's really the ultimate conversion, I think. You know, um, we don't want to stop at one. We just want to have enough passive income. Then how we can use that extra time we have to really build a relationship that truly matters because, you know, that's really the ultimate legacy that we can live to our kids and to other people, in my opinion. So. And, 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 and I would add one thing. And then the next step after that is to give outside, is to, is to be a force for good in the universe and give to the elderly or children or, or animals or the environment or whatever, whatever juices you and, and contribute beyond yourselves. Absolutely. Love that, buddy. Love it. Love it. Absolutely. And, and I, I would just interject as well. I think it's, it's, it's very important to have all those different types of goals, Right. Not just ultimate long term, but also midterm, short term. So that way you can be focusing on those things. Your journey, you mentioned around 2012 to today, that's an eight year journey. Right. And if you're thinking about eight years ahead, sometimes that's not going to be enough to get you up in the morning on a Tuesday when you got to go out and grind and work hard. Right. So having those short and midterm goals of whether it's taking your daughter to Disney every day or buying your father a a Rolex watch or sending your parents to Europe or whatever your goals may be, right? Having those short-term, mid-term goals, I think are really important. Um, So I want to transition to one other topic here um, as my last question, uh, just because it's, everybody's always thinking about this all the time. So I always like to address it. What, What are you personally doing, Jeff, right now to overcome all the fear that's out there in the world right now? What are some strategies that you're personally doing? Sure. I think there are two, Mark, that, you know, because fear is inevitable. I think that's human's basic instinct to survival just from the caveman age. I think the two things that I would do, number one, is instead of looking at failure or raw call it a seminar as, you know, failure, look at it as an opportunity for growth. You know, once you make that mindset switch, what can I, what opportunity do I have tomorrow to grow? You know, what can I fail tomorrow? So you are looking at from a bad thing to a good thing to help you grow, number one. And number two is that, you know, back to what I think either Jim or someone else said it, just surround surround yourself with like-minded people. That's why it's just so important to, you know, have a coach and be part of a mastermind because whatever is so huge for you, so difficult for you, such a big failure for you, for someone else, like, oh my gosh, this is such a big piece of cake. I've done that 12 years ago. It's just, oh, you know, right. You know, this is not that difficult. Just surround yourself with other people who are either like-minded or who are a few years ahead of you, just being so, so important. I think those are the two things I'll share. Love it. Love it. And guys, if, if you know, so, so would you say that the warrior program has been a positive experience for you? Absolutely. I've made such great, you know, connections and friends and, uh, you know, people doing business together and, uh, and also you're super good at kicking people's butt, me included. And that's been 
that's been huge, you know, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, if you're interested in our program, text the word CRUSH to 41411 and we'll get on a call and we'll see if it's a fit. See if you're a fit for us and if we're a fit for you. And uh, um, and if not, you'll still walk away with incredible insights and, and uh, valuable information. Uh, so it, it's a call worth doing regardless. So again, that's CRUSH to 41411. Well, listen, Jeff, uh, super impressed with what you're doing. So glad we had an opportunity just to just to kind of see where you're at. And uh, just, wow, what, what a lot of incredible stuff that you're up to, all the deals you're in and making things happen and moving and shaking. And, and uh, so really, really proud of you and um, glad to know you and excited to see you when you come down here to Orlando because I'm just a hop, skip and a jump. And that'll be an excuse for Tiffy and I to go cry like little kids uh, when the parade goes by in Disney. <laughs> I love it. Love it, love it. And one thing I would really love to add as well, just on that topic is, you know, if, if, if you're like a lot of people, which Jeff, you know, you may have experienced this or you may not have because you're a part of our network. I've talked with a lot of people over the past few months to where they're working from home. They, they get stuck in their caves and their work and, and they don't have a lot of outside motivation and people that they can be around just because of everything that's going on right now. And so many people have reached out to our team, just, just like yourself, Jeff, because especially right now when we're so isolated, it can be three or five or 10 times more valuable to be around a group of people that are going to push you all the time. I've been hearing that constantly from people that are reaching out that are saying, Hey, like I'm stuck in my cave at home and I just don't get much interaction. And it's very hard to, to motivate and push yourself outside of your comfort zone when you're in that position. And so, you know, even if you just want to talk to somebody and, and gain some advice and get some motivation, you know, text in, you know, crush to 41411. And I guarantee you, you're going to be glad that you did. And, and um, Jeff, I'm sure you're reaping the benefits of that as well. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. Well, thanks. Thanks, brother. It was great to see you and Mark. Good to see you, buddy. And, uh, and we'll, uh, We'll uh, we'll lead the circle back a year from now and see what's happened with that portfolio of yours, my friend. So, anyway, <laughs> thank, thanks 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 for coming on. Okay, all right, take yeah, care. Thank you. Rod, I know a lot of our listeners are wanting to take their multifamily investing business to the next level. Now, I know you've been hard at work helping our warrior students do just that using our ACT methodology, which is awareness, close, and transform. Can you explain to the listeners how they can get our help? You bet. Guys, we've been going nonstop for three years, building an amazing community of like-minded people. And our coaching students, which we call our warriors, have had extraordinary results. They've purchased thousands and thousands of units. And last year, we did over a thousand units with our students. And we're looking to grow this group and take it to the next level. We're looking for people who want to follow a proven framework that's really step-by-step and then leverage our systems and network to raise equity, to find and close deals, and to build partnerships nationwide. Now, our warrior community is finding success in any market cycle. So, if you're interested in finding out more about how you can become more of our incredible network and take advantage of the incredible opportunities that are coming very soon, apply to work with us at mentorwithrod.com or text CRUSH to 41411. That's mentorwithrod.com or text CRUSH to 41411.